All right, guys, welcome back. Once again, it is Saturday night, and it is time to watch an awesome movie and make an awesome snack. Now, this week, I gave you guys the choice between Groundhog Day, Pirates of the Caribbean, or Marley and Me. And you guys chose Groundhog Day. Now, that's probably because Groundhog Day was just this past Thursday, and as you've probably already heard, Punxsutawney Phil came out of his hole, saw his shadow, ran back in, and so we are going to have six more weeks of winter. And let me tell you right now, it is a frozen tundra out there. It is 14 degrees outside right now. I am not even kidding. I had to go out today and get the mail. So yes, I am very, very excited because I said that this movie was the one that I would prefer to watch this week. And as I said, it is Groundhog Day. Now I have this in 4K. I just bought it last week. And I gotta say, this is the menu up here, and it's a little disappointing. It's kind of cool, but you would think nowadays, especially with 4K and how cool they can make a menu look, they did that. <laughs> kind of crazy, but nonetheless, it's an awesome movie, and this is what we're gonna watch tonight, Groundhog Day. And we are gonna make an awesome snack, which I like to call, what do I like to call it? Peanut butter, chocolate, fudge. What the heck is it? And we are gonna, <laughs> and we are gonna make an awesome snack in just a minute here, which I like to call peanut butter fudge hog pops. Oh my gosh, guys, that actually took me like three times saying that before I got it right because I couldn't remember what I wanted to call it. I started out by wanting to call it groundhog holes, you know, kind of like donut holes. It's just like a circle of a little ball hole because, well, when they make the donut, it's actually what would go inside the middle of it. And groundhogs live in holes, so you know, donut holes, groundhog holes. So we are going to go upstairs and do that in just a minute, but before we do, I wanted to talk about the movie selections for next week. Now what we usually do each week, guys, is that we look at all these videos that I have on the walls here. I pick out three, and then I put them on YouTube for you guys to choose between the three. What I thought we would do this week, a little bit different, and I'm kind of thinking that we'll do this at the end of each month, because by that time, we have a whole stack of movies that you guys didn't choose. Now, a lot of people wanted to see those movies, but a lot more people voted for the other ones. So right here in my hand are all the movies that you guys did not choose to watch for the past month. We've got Enchanted, and if you remember, I was talking about how Disney just came out with Disenchanted. So this one would actually be a double feature, Enchanted and Disenchanted. We've got the Pirates of the Caribbean, and if you guys remember me saying I would much rather do the Curse of the Black Pearl, but this one right here is at world's end. So we're going to use this for the poll. But if this one wins, you can watch whatever Pirates of the Caribbean movie you want. Because I will be watching The Curse of the Black Pearl. We also have Adventures in Babysitting, one of my favorite movies from the 80s. Absolutely awesome. Totally hilarious. There are a few questionable scenes in here if you have kids who are going to be watching this movie. But we'll put it in the poll, and if you guys choose to watch this one, this is what we'll watch. We also have Teen Wolf. Teen Wolf is, again, one of my all-time favorites. I love it. It's from the 1980s. Michael J. Fox. This movie actually came out right before Back to the Future. This one also has a couple of questionable things in it if kids are going to be watching, but it's mainly just whatever his friend styles, what his t-shirts say. I'll let you guys look that up on Google and choose for yourself, but this one's going in the poll as well. And we've got two left, guys. One of them is Marley and Me. Owen Wilson, Jennifer Aniston, and a cute little pup. And the very last is another one of my all-time favorites, Spy Kids 3D. Now, you can watch Spy Kids 3, or you can watch Spy Kids 3D. The only way you can get this one right here and actually watch it on 3D without having a 3D TV is if you buy the DVD, probably from eBay or Amazon. And I showed you guys this before, but when you open it up, it actually comes with 3D glasses. So make sure that if you order this from eBay, that it comes with those glasses, or else you're going to have to go on Amazon and order them separately. So there they are, guys. Those are the selections for this week. There's usually only three movies to vote on. This week, we have six. I will put up this poll tonight. And then you guys can vote, and in about two or three days, I will let you guys know which one you chose for next week. So without further ado, guys, I am ready to go upstairs and make this snack. If you have a Saturday night snack and a movie shirt, this is the time to put it on because it's time for the magical spin. Who's ready to cook?
Okay guys, today we are exploring in Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania. Look at this gigantic mural, guys. This is on the side of a building here. This town is littered with huge six-foot statues of groundhogs, including the real, legit Punxsutawney Phil groundhog who lives right in Phil's borough. <laughs> Look at this entrance right here, the grand entrance. Can you believe it? We're at Gobbler's Knob, home of Punxsutawney Phil. And straight through here, it leads right up to the stage. Okay, here's the stage, and look at this. Apparently just thousands of people flood in here and crowd around this whole area waiting to see Phil and whether he's gonna see his shadow or not. We're going to the actual stage. Holy crap. Home of Punxy Phil. Yep, look at that. <laughs> Too funny. Cool. All right, let's go up on the thing here. This is where they wait for Phil to come out those two little doors. That's hilarious. So this is right where they stand when uh, Punxsutawney Phil comes out. And this is the door. I mean, do they put Phil in here? I think this... Uh, I guess you can't open it. I'm not going to try very hard to open it, but I think he's in there. And then they take him out and see if he sees his shadow. And they announce it right here. Right there, that's where he comes out. The seer of seers, the prognosticator of prognosticators. All right, so that is it for Gobbler's Knob, for the moment at least. We definitely have to come back here and experience this whole thing um, when this place is packed, and we will film it. But for now, we're going to town. We are in downtown Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania. We are so excited because we are here to see Punxsutawney Phil. Apparently, through this window, we can see him. What I understand, Phil is in here with his wife and his cousin. Are we going to be able to... Oh my gosh. Look straight ahead there. Okay, I see two of them, I think, in the little cove right there. And then the cove to the right... I think there's another one. Mm -hmm. How amazing is that? That sleeping creature right there with his teeth out is the Punxsutawney Phil. Actually, it might be the one behind him. Could even be this one over here. <laughs> I have no idea. Hello. Yeah. There's people here to visit you. Scratch your chin. Oh, babe, here he comes. Look, he's scratching. So guys, Phil actually lives in the library, in a corner window in the library, and you can come in here and see him. Look, he's eating lettuce. <laughs> Look, he's in here eating lettuce and a banana. How funny is that? Hungry little guy. Punxsutawney Phil, right in front of our very own eyes. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed that little treat. That was actually filmed a couple years ago for my other channel, Romancing the States, when Marianne and I had gone out to Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania. Now, there's a lot more to that video. It's probably about a 25-minute video. So if you want to see that, I'll put a link right up here or in the description below. And you can go over and watch that whole video. Gobbler's Knob is where they pull out the groundhog and they see whether he's seen his shadow or not. They actually have a whole gift shop on site. They have t-shirts and stuff like that. They even have some memorabilia from the movie Groundhog Day, although Groundhog Day was not filmed in the actual Punxsutawney or right there at Gobbler's Knob. It was actually filmed in another state altogether. I don't remember if it was Indiana or Illinois. I think it was Illinois. But anyways, let's get down to making this treat. Tonight we're gonna make something that I have never made before. I called them hog pops just because it's funny. <laughs> but what it actually is, is cake pops. Look at those. That's what we're going to be making tonight. But we're going to be dipping them 
in peanut butter chocolate. Actually, I don't know that it's peanut butter chocolate, but we have these things called melt -ons. You melt these, and then after you make the cake pops, you dip these in, so it'll have like a peanut butter coating over a fudge pop. At least that's what the plan is. So here's everything we have to make these. The first and most important thing, probably, would be this cake pop maker. It's by a company called Baby Cakes. You can get these at Walmart. I think you can get them at Target. I actually had to order mine from Amazon because Walmart was out at the time. I believe this was about 25, 30 bucks. They actually have a smaller one and a bigger one. So the smaller one you can get for about 20, the bigger one's about 45. This one was right in the middle. Wait a minute, I just saw a random cat outside. Yeah, kitty, 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 kitty. Where are you? Kitty, 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 kitty. So anyways, the next thing that we need, and you don't really have to get one of these. You can do this on the stove in the microwave. But this is a candy melting pot. I also picked this up at Walmart, and I believe this was also about 20, 25 bucks. Now I got two different kinds of things here because I want to make these fudge brownies and dip them in the peanut butter. However, if for any reason that doesn't work, I also got chocolate fudge cake mix. Both of these call for basically the same thing, water, vegetable oil, and eggs. And each of these were only about a buck fifty a piece at Walmart. Now this was in the crafting aisle around the wedding stuff. You know, they have a lot of things that have to do with decorating cakes in that aisle. This is a cake pop holder. It's basically just a cardboard stand that after you dip them, you can stick them right in there and they will be held upright. I got the cookie sticks in the exact same aisle. These are about, yeah, they're six inches long. They actually had some gold ones. They had longer ones. I only bought 20 of them. I don't plan on making a whole ton of them, although I do plan on them being totally delicious. And I believe these are wooden, so I think you can use these over and over. We got the peanut butter melts in the same aisle. These can also be found in the aisle with chocolate chips. They have a lot of different colors and flavors, chocolate, white chocolate, chocolate, there's red, blue, yellow, and then they had these peanut butter ones. I think they even had like cookie crunch and a couple of other ones. And to top them off, I had to get out the candy eyeballs. Now these can be found in the dessert aisle as well. I bought these back at Halloween because um, I like to make little monster treats, of course. But these are about a buck fifty, and I thought it would be funny if we gave our hog pops some eyeballs. So here's what our two little machines look like out of the box. We've got the candy melter here, and this is like a silicone little thing that sits down inside there. Now, I know if you're melting candy on a stovetop, you have to have like a double boiler with water underneath, and that heats the pot above and that's where you melt your candy. If you're doing it in a microwave, you can probably just put it in a microwavable bowl and melt it at like 30 second increments. So that's what came in the box with that. Pretty simple, also came with instructions, as did the Cake Pops maker. And then here is the maker here. And if we open it up, you can see this is gonna make pretty small little balls, but it'll be basically like golf ball sizes. It also came with this, which I assume is when you take them out of there, you put them in here to kind of cool down. Uh, came with this little thing, probably to pull them out of there. And this also came with a whole bag of the little pop sticks, I guess you'd call them. Now it looks like by the way this thing looks that we probably could have even passed on buying this. And this was like, I don't know, at least 10 bucks, maybe even 20. So I was very hesitant about buying that in the first place. But yeah, looking at this, here's one of the sticks that comes with it, and you stick it right down in that hole and it serves the exact same purpose. So if you wanted to decorate them like this, you don't even have to buy that. You can just use this that comes with your cake pop maker and it serves the same purpose. Okay, so I've been watching some videos online just to make sure that I get a good idea of how to do this. Plus, I wanted to make sure, or at least see if anybody else has tried to make them with fudge brownie mix. I only found one lady, she didn't say a whole lot about it, but it looked like they turned out good. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the fudge brownie mix. If this one for some reason doesn't work, then we'll mix up the chocolate fudge cake mix and we'll just use this one. Okay, so while that heats up, this batter is pretty dang thick. 
So one thing that I saw people doing online was that they took a Ziploc bag, put some of the batter in there, snipped off a little corner, that way it's like a bakery bag and you can squeeze it to put your batter into the little wells in here. Otherwise this might be kind of difficult because it is really, really thick. <laughs> That was not easy. <laughs> so that definitely worked much better than a spoon would have. And after I was done, I still have some in here. So I fold it over the end and I just use a bag clip to keep it closed so nothing would seep out. Apparently we give that anywhere from four to six minutes and then cake pops should come out or at least cake balls. Okay, fudge brownie balls. <laughs> Okay, so those didn't turn out too bad. That's how they look. I had to be kind of gentle with them as I was taking them out, because at least they were very soft, but they're starting to firm up a little bit. So I think this is actually gonna work. So that worked out really good. We got about 30 of these little holes, little donut holes, whatever you want to call them, hog pops, out of one box of brownie mix. Now there probably could have been at least 36 easily, but it was really difficult getting the batter into that bag, so I lost a lot in that process. It was a very clean, easy process though. This stuff all cleaned up really easily with just some paper towels. And I did forget to say, you need to use a little bit of this oil spray, not necessarily this kind, but some kind of nonstick spray right before you put your batter in there. I forgot to use it the first batch and it still didn't stick because it's a nonstick surface anyway, but just to be safe, get some kind of spray. But yeah, look at these already. They already look absolutely delicious and we haven't even got to coating them with the peanut butter yet. Okay, so I cleaned up my area. I got the melting pot ready, plugged it in. You have to let it warm up for five minutes before you add any of the chocolate. So here are our little donut holes and they feel pretty good. You know, like when they first came out, they were really soft. I felt like I had to be really careful with them or they're gonna fall apart. But now they actually feel pretty solid, but you can tell that they're soft on the inside as well. I decided to use the really small sticks that came with the Cake Pop Maker. And I also decided to go ahead and put this together because there's more holes in here. The other one only holds like 12. And this one looks like 11 in each of these. So 11, 22, 44. This will hold 44 pops. We got our Meltums here. And they smell like peanut butter, but they smell like, kind of like a dull peanut butter. So I hope they taste good. I'm sure it will once we put them on the pops. I've used melting candies before and they tasted pretty good. Like if you remember when we made the Rice Krispie Monsters, we put the melting candy on those, it was really good. So I don't expect these are gonna be bad. Okay, so that's been about five minutes. Let's go ahead and pour these in. It doesn't say what to use to stir it with. So I'm just gonna use a spoon because I don't wanna damage the silicone in there. Let's get our eyes prepared because we're gonna to need to put them on there when the candy is wet and soft. So it's taken about 10 minutes for this stuff to melt to this point already. It's not ready to dip these in yet, but what I understand is that you're supposed to dip the stick in, then stick it into the pop. Okay. I was trying to go in through the side, but if you go through the soft bottom, it's gonna be better, I guess.
All right, guys, here they are, the final product. Look at that, they look like the Muppets. <laughs> so this actually worked out pretty dang good. As you can see, I did not put eyes on all of them. I only wanted to put them on a couple. I really don't even know how these are gonna taste, but we are about to try them out. So I'm gonna use this one right here, which is just kind of disheveled and a not perfect one. Peanut butter candy over fudge brownie on a stick, AKA hog pops. Mmm, mm-hmm. That is pretty dang good, actually. What the peanut butter reminds me of is if you've ever had peanut butter covered peanut butter cups. Like the peanut butter that covers those peanut butter cups is not the same peanut butter as what's on the inside. Kind of like a peanut butter fudge, basically. But that is pretty dang good. It worked out very well using the brownies. And once again, as you can see, it worked out very well using the peanut butter candy and the eyes. It actually looks like, it reminds me of McDonald's, doesn't it? It reminds me of like Hamburglers. <laughs> Mini little Hamburglers. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. We got our movie, Groundhog Day. We got our snack, Hog Pops. I'm gonna kick back here with some pillows and blankets and watch this movie, and I hope you guys are gonna do the same. Make sure you join me every Saturday night for Saturday Night Snack and a Movie, and make sure you keep an eye out for the poll going up. We have six movies to choose from this week. I will see you guys next Saturday.